Live Golf's second season wraps up this weekend in Miami uh, with its $50 million championship at the league. Finding itself in the middle of more controversy, Alan Shipnuck is golf writer and executive editor and partner of Fire Pit uh, Collective. He's also author of a new book with a pretty clever title, Live and Let Die, uh, out this week. Uh, Alan, the, I don't know who could have predicted this, but the intersection of something as horrific as, as uh, the terror attack on, on Israel, it's somehow playing into discussions about uh, about a, a golf tour. It's, it's something we could not have predicted ever. It's true. I mean, there's so many geopolitical overtones to this story. You know, after the terror attack, the PGA Tour put out a statement basically affirming its support for Israel. Mohammed bin Salman, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, the benefactor of Live Golf, he put out a statement in support of the Palestinians. And it just throws into sharp relief that these two organizations that are trying to come together and reshape golf have different value systems, they see the world a little differently, and it's just another complication in trying to consummate uh, this new world order of golf. You can think of some of the Olympics. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to do uh, globally. Sports is global, and you're supposed to, you know, put all this other stuff aside, but we still boycotted Olympics. Uh, we've been boycotted uh, in Olympics. There are geopolitical things that go on, and I... I guess we shouldn't expect it to be perfect, but I, I think the PGA did all it could to try to, to stave off what was happening, but then money took over. But you knew once you decided to, uh, to sort of go along with it, you knew something like this could happen. You knew who your partners were. It's always been very tenuous. And, and th when this, was a, this deal was announced in June, um, the so-called framework agreement. People thought it was it was a done deal. It was a long contract with a lot of legalese, but it was essentially pinky promises to try and work together and let, let's see if we can get something, um, you know, consummated. But in, in fact, there's nothing binding. There's no hammer in that agreement. And so now a, a lot of American-based money has realized this, whether it's private equity from New York, it's Silicon Valley, VCs, even Hollywood money, they're trying to get into golf and they're trying to blow this deal up so they can push the Saudis aside. And that, that's what's made it so complex, these negotiations, because uh, for the PGA Tour, if they take on this U.S.-based money, that will certainly help um, s you know, sell this, this new product to the American fans and to the players and to Congress, which has been scrutinizing this, this whole situation very carefully. But if they, the Saudis get cut out of the deal and the public investment fund takes away its investment, now Live Golf and the PJ Tour go back to being fierce competitors and the public investment fund still has a big checkbook and now they're a little upset and they're, and they're, they're ready to, to start picking off more players. So the, the stakes are very high for the PJ Tour, how they handle this negotiation going forward. We got to go, but, and, and, but life goes on. Phil Mickelson says there's a bunch of uh, uh, well-known players that want to join Live. They see these guys having fun, making all this money. It's, it's something we got to talk about probably uh, further, and it, 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 uh, you may need an, uh, either another book or, or an, you know, add an abridge or add something at the end. You need a few more chapters because it's not over, Alan, but, but, but thanks for, for, for being with us this morning. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. Okay.